Hello and welcome fellow bookworms and film fans. Welcome to this week's episode of The Contented Narrative where we shall be looking at Jaws, which is actually my husband's all-time favourite film ever. Never even seen it before, <laughs> before I got with him. So Jaws was written by Peter Benchley and it was published in 1974. It was then adapted to screen in 1975 and I will be looking at four things as usual. I'll be looking at how good is the film, how good is the book, the plot, how well does it transpire from the film to the book, well from the book to the film, and of course overall what does it take from the book and the film. So please bear in mind there will also be spoilers within this episode as there is in every episode so if you've not seen either of them and you'd like to don't go forward with this until obviously you've seen one or the other. So the film. Now as I said it is my husband's all-time favourite film. I mean he's got a lot of favourite films but this is his number one if you asked him um, and it's not hard to see why it is a good adventure thriller film um, and it has sort of like elements of horror to it as well and the fact that the shark isn't seen like fully until he attacks the boat sort of towards the end of the film is brilliant now i know that obviously the reason why they did this was because bruce which is what they named the shark uh, kept uh, having mechanical faults with it so it was unable to be used as much throughout the film but I think that's what makes it so good that you see the fear and you hear the music you know everybody knows that favorite bit of music you know that famous bit that you <laughs> every, everybody spoofs on that bit of music and the fact that you hear that and you see little bits and, and suggestions but you don't actually see the shark until right at the end really does play to sort of like that thriller thriller within it um along with obviously the line we're gonna need a bigger boat is just such an iconic line um, and it was ad-libbed as well it wasn't even in the script and it's yeah it's such an iconic line in the film and um, it's aged extremely well considering that it was released in uh, 74 5 sorry and the fact that I watched it just the other week and it, I still love it as much as I did the first time I saw it it has a good blend of action it has a good blend of thriller like that first scene with um, Bruce, as we're going to call him, uh, attacking and killing that that woman in the ocean, uh, to then sort of like the action of like the the chasing of the, the the cat and mouse basically within the shark, and the boat with the three men in it. It's just everything that you want in a film, and honestly, it's it's so brilliantly done. Um, and it gets it gets a nine out of ten for me. It's a fantastic film, and I would recommend this film to pretty much anyone. It is it is what it is, um, and as I said because it's been out so long I reckon a lot of people have probably seen it and do know the plot so you know <laughs> if you haven't you've probably been living under a rock um now the book the book I originally bought for Michael um and then I ended up thinking oh I could do it as a good episode for my for my channel and I actually did kind of enjoy the book um it is a good read and you also get that feel that the shark because you get sort of like point of views from the shark and you get this view that He's not just a mindless beast. Like this shark is intelligent. He's vindictive. He's smart. Um, and honestly, he just wanted to kill just for sake of killing rather than killing for food, which is what sharks normally do. Um, I love the way that you get the first couple of kills from the shark's perspective, but you also sort of like get this kind of feel that, you know, all these people that are telling him, oh, the shark should be gone. The shark shouldn't be there. And they're telling um, Chief Brody that this shark isn't clever this shark won't stay around, this shark doesn't know what he's going on about and yet Brody keeps going, no this shark, this shark knows what he's doing and then when you get that final sort of like couple of chapters where they're chasing the shark and the shark's chasing them and he is, he's vicious, he knows what he's doing and he, he enjoys it, he really does. Um, now it is an easy read um, and I did feel that the characters were very relatable as well because I do find sometimes with characters you kind of sat there being like well, I wouldn't like like that. Like, that's clearly stupid. Like, why have they done that? But with these characters, you're like, oh, I can see that. Even when Chief Brody's wife, Ellen, has the affair in the book, never happens in the film, I'll discuss that later, you kind of feel for Ellen because she's going, you know, I used to be this person and everything like that. And even though she's cheating and, you know, I'm like, oh, God, cheating, you still kind of sit there and go, mm, poor Ellen. And you feel relatable to all of those characters. Um... And then you do feel for Chief Brody when he's having to deal with this massive shark that's killing people, but also, you know, the mayor that's telling him that this shark's not going to do anything more and to reopen the beaches, which costs the life of a couple more people. Um, so, you know, I will I will give this book a 7 out of 10. It is a good book. It's an easy read. 
and you can get it done in a couple of days um and it's something that i would probably recommend maybe not reading if you're gonna go out on the ocean later <laughs> but you know giving it a read on a summer holiday just sat down by the beach it's it's such a lovely lovely little book now the plot so the film starts with two teenagers running towards the ski the sea to skinny dip uh, the girl goes in first the boy falls asleep um, and then the girl gets killed by the shark and obviously you've got the shark pulling her around she tries to escape from it she goes down she screams and it's such an iconic sort of like opening scene as it were now the book starts with sort of the same kill but it starts with the shark's perspective the same two people boy and girl you know the girl goes out the boy doesn't and she disappears again the boy sleeps for all of it um but then chief martin Brody is a native in the book uh, but an outsider in the film which annoys me a little bit because they do keep playing to the fact that he's an outsider in the film but he's not he's a native so just leave him be um and you also get more of an insight to his and his wife's life in the book as well like how ellen does seem unhappy in her relationship at times and misses what she once had because she used to be part of like the summer crowd you know the rich people and she married chief Brody, and she is kind of happy but not at the same time um uh, but in the film, it seems like they're a perfectly happy team, work together, have each other's backs 90% of the time. Um, so then in the film, we get straight to the first victim of the shark being found. You know, someone finds her and it's quite obvious it's a shark attack. In the book, it gets a little takes a little longer to get to that point. Um, but in both, it's co finally con initially confirmed as a shark attack. Uh, and also in the book, they seem to have a bit more of a police force as well. So... In the film, it's almost like you've got the police force, but it's like three people, I think, in the film. In the book, they've got like a day shift, night shift, and they've got Chief Brody as well. Um, so in both, Chief Brody wants to close the beaches with the news that a shark has attacked, so the shark can move on, and he doesn't end up, you know... Sorry, like, hair in my face. And the shark, you know, won't have any more food to eat, basically. But in both, he ends up being bullied to leave the beach open. Now, in the book, it's from... Uh, the mayor vaughn and the newspaper writer they both bully him to leave it open in the film it's sort of like all the town elders as it were bully him to leave it open so then in both you get the death of the little boy on the on the raft now in the film however the beach is more crowded and chief Brody is there so he kind of sees it and you get that famous trombone shot um and we also get the death of a dog pippin off screen as well so the shark has taken at this point three victims that we know of now, in the book, the beach isn't as crowded and the chief is at home when it happens. And we also get told of a second death of a very old man who's like 65. And maybe I should take back very old, considering I'm almost 30, of an older man at 65. And you don't get this in the in the film at all. You get the off-screen death of, of Pippin rather than the off-screen death of this little old gentleman. Um, then in the film, you get a town meeting of sorts where the mother of the dead boy blames Brody um and basically says what you're gonna do about it so they say we should hire someone to you know to clean the beaches and then that goes off that she then puts out a reward saying anyone that catches the shark gets this amount of money which i'll talk about in a moment in the book it's a lot more private she comes screaming into the office she slaps him Brady lets her say a couple of things first and then turns around and goes it's not me basically this is what we're gonna do so in the film, as I said, there is a reward offered to catch the shark. So tons of people come, go out to sea, um, you know, and they, they try and catch the shark. They then catch a shark, not the great white Bruce, but they catch a shark um, and they think that the shark has been captured. So now everyone can go out. Chief Brody and later when we find out Hopper as well, um, he isn't 100% sure on, on the death of this or great white, basically, because they're like, this isn't the right shark. In the book, however, they ask a local Ben to go out and try and catch this shark. So Ben goes missing and his boat is mauled. So we know he's dead, but we don't actually ever see his body. Now in the film, however, uh, the shark expert Hooper, or Hopper, I'm going to say Hooper. I'm pretty sure Hopper was wrong. Sorry. Going back to Bugs Life there. So <laughs> you get Hooper, Hopper, oh, whatever. Um, and Brody goes out at night, comes across Ben's boat, uh, Hopper dives in, Hooper, whatever, and we see Ben's head sort of like pop out and scare us. Um, and that scene in the film is a lot later. So we never actually in the book come across Ben's body, we just come across his boat and we realise that he's no longer with us. Um, 
Also, Brody had two small boys in the film, but in the book he has three boys who are all slightly older in age. The youngest, you know, is older than the oldest in the film. Uh, so also again, as I said, we, we get more of insight to uh, Brody and his wife, but we also get more of an insight to just his wife as well, who seems dissatisfied and upset a lot in life. And we also see a past connection between Hooper and Ellen. So Ellen throws a dinner party for Hooper and a few others in the book, which then leads to Ellen having an affair with Hooper, which never, ever happens in the film. In fact, in the film, Hooper and Brody are pretty much buddies and, you know, they've got each other's backs. So now we come to the 4th of July weekend, which is when the beaches are reopening again, because in the film they believe they've caught the shark, uh, apart from Hooper and Brody, and in the book they just need the revenue because, you know, Amity is a summer town. If they don't get the summer revenue, they die, basically. So a big subplot in the book uh, that isn't in the film is that Vaughan, the town's mayor, owes the mafia money, who are applying pressure to Vaughan and, in he, and he in turn applies pressure to Brody to keep the beaches open and to keep Amity running for summer. Uh, you don't really get any of that in the film and I'm kind of glad that they cut it out because it seemed like a, diff like a little subplot that took away from the film. So in the film people slowly start to go into the water, they see a thin, they think it's a shark, it turns out to be just two boys just uh, pranking everybody. Um, however, further down the beach Brody's boy and some of his friends are in a boat when they have an accident, a guy is trying to help them, but then he gets attacked by Brucey, he's coming for you, um, and he basically takes out this guy, so everyone panics, runs out of the beach. Um, in the book, however, on the 4th of July weekend, no one dies, but a teenager is like this close to being taken out by the shark, because they're keeping an eye out, the teenager runs in, and then suddenly they're like, I can see shallow, and the teenager legs it back out. <laughs> so anyway, in both, the beaches are now finally properly closed, which unfortunately probably does mean the death of Amity, but it means the survival of a lot of its citizens. Um, so then at this point, in both the film and the book, Brody hires Quint to help him catch the shark. And he ropes Hooper in with him because in the book, they're just like buddies in the film, sorry, in the book, it's because Hooper's a shark expert and knows what he's doing with the boats. In the film, it's because they're buddies basically. And again, shark expert. So in both, all three, Quint, Brody, and Hooper, go out on Quint's boat to deal with the shark once and for all. In the film, Brody and Hooper are almost friends. Um, and in the book, as I said, they really dislike each other. But, but this is because as well, I mean, Brody doesn't like him on principle because he's like a tall, dark, athletic, good-looking gentleman. Quite different from the shorter version of the character we saw in the film. Um, but also because he suspects that, Bro that um, Hooper has slept with his wife, Ellen. He can't prove it, but he suspects that something has happened. Um, so in the film, it's suggested that the three men spend the entire time on the boat, including overnight. And you will see a fantastic story from Quint about him being on the USS Indianapolis and being stranded in water surrounded by sharks. And this is when they sort of like have a bonding session with all three of them comparing scars, which is a fantastic scene. Brilliant. In the book, however, they go home at the end of each night and then they go back out in the beginning of the morning. So then... In both, though, you get Hooper put in a cage, put in a cage on the boat so that he can go down and dive with the shark. Um, and it's mainly to sort of like catch images of it um, and sort of like have a look at what this great white is. Because, you know, Hooper's entire life is great whites and, and sharks and fish and everything like that. Um, in the film, the majority of why it gets used is because they want to then poison the shark. Now, you also get this vindictive smartness of the shark because in the book and the film you get this this feeling that this shark knows exactly what's going down and it is playing and it was messing with you and it is messing with them and you sat there going oh damn it gonna eat you <laughs> and it, fair enough it does uh, as you will find out uh, so anyway so you get the game of cat and mouse uh, with the shark who seems to be toying with them and you know it's toying with them and they can't quite figure it out yet quint's kind of got an idea but the other two are like yeah shark is you know nothing but in the book as well you also see the mayor vaughan realize he's lost everything to mobsters and leave this then makes ellen realize that she was very lucky to have brody and she is basically like if he survives i'm gonna be so happy and we're gonna live our lives and we're gonna act like nothing's ever happened um anyway so when hooper goes down in the cage two completely different things happen so in the film he goes down to the cage the shark attacks he gets out dies down to the bottom to get away from the shark in the book however he gets killed gone 
no more. Uh, which I wasn't expecting because obviously I watched the film first, didn't read the book first. I was like, ah, oh, I hope I'll be all right. No, he's gone. He dead. <coughs> so, Quint then dies in both while trying to kill the shark. The shark then kind of jumps up, grabs, you know, part of the boat, chews away. The boat is basically sinking. All is lost. Quint tries to kill the shark and in the book he kind of does because the shark has been bombarded with you know those iron rods that like have like big boy things attached to them it's been stabbed it's been shot so basically eventually everything kind of kills the shark and as the shark's going for Brody in the book it kind of then you know disappears off into the bottom of the ocean because it's dead and it's gone whereas in the film you know the shark has been attacked a lot of times you know kind of pretty much swallows Quint like in half and then you know comes back to be the other half and then Brody throws like a gas tank into the shark's mouth and then shoots it, which explodes the shark everywhere. Oh, shark chum. So then the film ends with Brody and Hooper paddling back to shore because Hooper then comes up out of nowhere and goes, I was alive the whole time. Whereas the book, it just ends with Brody going back to shore all on his lonesome, but knowing that the shark is dead. So the plot is so very different. I mean, you have some of the same characters and a few of the large plot points are the same. They killed quite a few of the, the same people, but they also killed different people as well. You know, you never actually see Ben's body. The, the older gentleman survives. You know, it's all these little bits that change. And they added their own sort of like spin on it. They also did, as I said, miss out the plot point of the mayor. Um, mayor Vaughan, you know, owing money to mobsters, but I understand why they did it. It seemed a bit, you know, didn't need to be there. Um... It is. It did make a very, very good blockbuster film, uh, and it has stood the test of time. But in regards to how much it actually took from the book, it didn't take as much as I actually initially thought that it might. So apart from, you know, some of the bigger points, the plot gets a five out of ten for me. Now overall, the plot has its differences. Ellen has an affair. Brody is actually a resident and not just someone who moved there. The deaths are different. The subplot is uh, missing. And I mean, yeah, it still has a huge, great white and it's based in Amity. But overall, I think, you know, from, from everything that I've discussed, it gets a four out of ten. That doesn't mean that it's not a good film and it's not a good book. Both are very good in their own rights, which is why I review the film and the book before I do the, the plot. Um, now, obviously, this is my own opinion, of course. I'm happy to hear if you agree or disagree. Uh, with any of the points uh, just leave it in the comments below don't forget to click subscribe and like this video each video does come out around about five o'clock on a wednesday so you know regular as clockwork if there are any film to book adaptations that you'd like me to do or even because i'm starting to do guest stars now that covid is as lifting i've got a few guest stars lined up in the next couple of months but if you'd like to be a guest star as well drop down below in the comments um a book to film adaptation you'd like to do and a guest star that you'd like to do but thank you so much for watching this episode and remember to always keep it contento.